First of all, for those of you that I invited here to check out my dance show, I'm sorry to disappoint you, I won't be making it. That will happen next year then because of these. We have roughly about 20 minutes to convince you guys that the hottest topic, the hottest business that you all should be in for the next uh, five to 10 years is transport, believe it or not. And we even have a solution for you to become a billionaire and we're gonna reveal all of those secrets to you in these, in these 20 minutes. Some of you may, may have heard the term mobility as a service and what it will do, what it will do to the transport. And this is what it looks like. Uh, we've all seen big changes in, in sectors such as media, retail, uh, all kinds of businesses that have gone, gone and changed completely through digitalization. One of the last frontiers that not changed yet is transport. Uh, there are reasons for that, but we are going to see it. And it's a huge thing. This is our guess of what it might be, what it might be looking like in the near future. If I look at my kids, like the one that is 15, he really thinks that do we, do we really have to do this all separately? If I use a bus, if I use a taxi, if I use a bike or city car rental, any of these, why don't I get it from just one one-stop shop? Why doesn't this work like my teleoperator that brings in all the services together and, and just, just delivers those? We don't think about anymore if I want to call to Sweden, where Sonia just came from. We don't think about having to, do I use satellite link or do I use copper? What should I use? I use my operator and just say, okay, connect me. But we don't have that in transport yet, but we'll soon have. These are some examples of packages that are pretty close by. And I would say uh, you might be hearing afterwards things like Uber and such. They are bringing us closer and closer into actually having a bundle. And I would say bundle close enough to compete with a service level agreement against owning your own car. Okay, some of you might think, okay, transport, that's not such a huge business. It's not a, not a big thing. Gaming is huge, but Let's see, well, back. This is the worth. Consumer business in, in transport, the transport service market is 10,000 billion euros annually. We are on the verge of redividing this business. And this is, this is what, what is going on. I know that the car industry, car industry understands this. There is a lot happening. And normally this digitalization means that new players can come up and actually get a big share of that one. We don't have global service providers other than Uber, Lyft and such that are, that are the first comers at the moment. We don't have many of them. But if you think why the word of Uber, for example, is so huge, this is why. So don't think of transport as something, something small or, or don't think of taxi business. Think of that figure. In other words, if we think of what happened with telecom industry from 80s to here, and the huge change and what it's contributed to the, to the world economy, that the average revenue per user, the monthly, monthly revenue that can be derived from, from one consumer in Western countries is roughly about 30 euros or less. But for transport, it's 10 times, 300 euros a month that we spend in transport. Think if you're on top of that and all of that. And why there's a lot to be gained? You know, this system is built solely or mainly on having private cars. One person, one car. And the usage of this system, usage of those cars is less than 4%. So there's a lot to be gained. Those packages that I showed you can be way cheaper than what you're paying now as as your, as your debt for, for your car loans. And this is what we're talking about. I have the brightest mind, I can easily say the brightest minds in the world at the moment. I know that the whole mobility as a service, the concept is born here in, in Finland, in, in this, uh, this community. And we have, have the ones that have been doing it and are doing it now, now on stage. For us, it's okay, jump up and say, no, that's, that's all wrong and we'll try to fight against you. I've got pretty good ones to, to fight, fight with you guys. But for next, um, one of the success, success stories, maybe some of you have used 
Kutsu Plus here, and behind that technology is Ajelo. And Temu is CEO and co-founder of that. How do you see you fit into this part? Do you think that there are possibilities for startups to become really huge? Yes. Uh, maybe I can start by explaining what is Kutsu Plus and what is Ajelo. Uh, we have service and we have technology. So Kutsu Plus is service of Helsinki Region Transport. And the aim is to get people out of private cars. And to do so, we need to have service which is affordable, meaning shared rights. But still we need to have high quality, which means uh, getting to destination with our transfers, real-time need, and you have to serve those. And then we have the technology. And that's what our company is about, ILO. And well, the aim was to ha uh, the, have the technology in urban contexts. Mm -hmm. And that's, that means scalability. And for scalability, we have to have fully automated system. We need to rely on uh, cloud-based technology. And uh, we have to have super scalability. The more demand, the more vehicles the better service, the better efficiency. And actually, I'm happy to say that uh, we were acquired last week. And now we can combine that technology to knowledge in operations, and we will conquer the world. You will see. But how does that fit to do this mobility as a service? I argue that <coughs> on-demand shared rights, that's one key component of future urban transportation. But that's only one component. We need other components also. We need options for passengers. They have travel need, and one of the components fits best. And if that's not always the private car, we can win. All right. Hey, congratulations about this. Then we have a young superstar here. Um, <laughs> I believe, what, over 300 articles varying from Guardian, Washington Post, Chinese TV, Reuters, and all of them have been interviewing Sonia about the thesis you made for Helsinki City. How did this happen? How did you become a superstar overnight? <laughs> well, yeah, that's a long story. So let's begin with something. So, well, the our original idea of the concept of mobility as a service came from ITS Finland here. And then <laughs> on uh, one night I met Sambo and he told me about this, this idea. And of course I was fascinated. I didn't quite understand what it was. But I thought, well, it could be a challenge for me because I was in a situation where I was, I was ending my studies and searching for a master's thesis uh, topic. So I grabbed this topic and started to write my thesis at Helsinki City Planning Department. And now, I, after writing my thesis, I also work there. So my thesis, um, it described the concept also with user cases so that anyone could really understand it with that kind of packages that Sampa showed. But I also studied how to implement the concept in Helsinki or actually in any other city as the concept really is scalable. But yeah, now we're being uh, in over 300 magazines and radios and TV shows and the world is really following us and actually the concept is nowadays called also uh, the Helsinki model so this has brought <laughs> very much attention to us and we are being connect contacted several times a week uh, from companies that are interested to come to Finland to run this kind of business to launch their uh, their ideas and from um, researchers and from other cities that how could they also um, cooperate with us or have the same kind of system there. So I think we already had a fast or ambitious timetable but now we are <laughs> working even harder because of all this pressure on us. So it's very intriguing. So the second thing that we want to convince you of is that, yes, there's a huge business out there. And of course, we think that Helsinki and Finland all together, Helsinki, Tampere in, in, in particular, are the best places to test this market. Because 
we think that the market will be and is roughly about two, three years ahead of the rest of the world. Uh, but to ensure that, there are some measures that I know Helsinki has been taking and is going to take, if you can tell a little bit about those also. Yeah. So at the moment, we are actually creating uh, a more concrete action plan with steps that we can really implement. Now we are in the phase of implementing it. But we already have this course uh, plan of action, which these seven steps, uh, I will just shortly go through them. So first of all, we need to have a true discussion between all stakeholders. So in order to create a kind of ecosystem, service ecosystem, and this new market, uh, we need to know the preconditions of each stakeholder in advance. So we need to have a true discussion. I think that is one of the strong uh, parts that we have in Finland. We have good conversation between the public and private sectors. Then there might be some need to revise the legislation or regu regulation. Actually, they are, have already been revised or are revised. And the new market needs uh, regulation for its, uh, itself. But also the public transport ticket sales needs to be opened as these kind of packages will be offered by private companies, so they also need to sell public transport tickets. The market needs to be established. This means the establishment of the companies. But also, purchase, of course, will be directed to the mobile operators, the private companies, as they now are directed to uh, public transport authorities or then directly to transport service providers. So that will be changed. And of course, we need to pilot. And that's what we are going to do in some months, I think, I think very soon, where we be begin. All right. Then to prove our point, uh, we have Matti Lankinen from a group of companies or a company that is yep. built on a group of companies uh, from Bediafi yep. that, is, that is actually doing this, is starting the first ones. I know this is a huge thing. Yeah, How is Helsinki a good place? Yeah, thank you, Sam. Uh, Finland is a great place uh, for all of you who want to have a real test bed for mobility as a service. Come to Finland, come to Helsinki. These people really support us a lot. As a group of enterprises, we couldn't resist this. We have actually crafted the opportunity. We have proposed a pilot and uh, we have cooperated with both uh, authorities and particularly Helsinki to create such pilot. Uh, we actually started a new um, unofficial process. You may have heard about Mobile Monday that was there to build the ecosystem for mobile industry. We are building the ecosystem for mass industry. We have the Mars Tuesday started three times. We have already met and we continue to do that. That's an open platform for people to come and join, bring ideas to bring the Mars alive. But yes, we do have a group of companies who have started to look into it. Uh, there are companies like Xenia, which is a major Finnish enterprise. Uh, there's VTT, which is the um, research institute. We, Vidia, uh, Vidia, by the way, stands for vehicle or media. So we build a media for advertising for people on the move. And, and um, there are also other companies in, in the talks now that uh, I'm not, um, for advertising particularly. Now, from our point of view, uh, the target is to have the pilot up and running next year, the sooner the better. We have done a lot of work together with Sonia and, and your colleagues to make that run. We actually have uh, the Scotsu Plus there <laughs> in our picture, as you can see. Uh, the, so different forms of, of uh, mobility will be combined under the concept of mobility as a service. The operator is going to be part of it, and there's going to be a, a lot of other companies working together with the operator to make uh, moving more smooth, and particularly to make it more um, cost efficient for people. So there is a buck to be made, and we genuinely believe in it. All right. So we promised to let you in on all secrets. Uh, let's go back to the picture. So we argue that there is a division of money, a huge one, that will look like this. And in the end, you know, it will, it will only actually need something that combines existing, existing parts of it. We already have taxis, we have public transport, we have car shares, we have all of these. What we don't have yet is hotels.com for transport. So in the end, to become a billionaire here, it doesn't mean that much. 
At the same time, I have to say transport is about the biggest system in the world. So there are lots of, lots of barriers and such. And people keep asking me always, OK, what type of companies will pick up this new thing of, of combining all the needs and bringing it to the user with a good SLA, with a good service promise? Uh, I'd like to pick your brains also on that one. What type of companies? Can you just have a one-man uh, app and, and get, a, get your slice out of the 10,000 billion euros? Or does it have to be a teleoperator or a huge company? What are your points? Let's start now yeah, here. Well, basically, uh, you can have many types of operators in this business. You can have big companies who can invest money to make big changes, but you can also be the e-bookers of all mobility as a server service. You, you can uh, be the company that um, is a buyer of the services for the consumers or companies. So you don't necessarily need to have all that investment to be a big player in this industry. This industry is in the making, and there's a lot of space for people who are innovative and, and willing to move now. Any points? Well, <clears throat> if you think about uh, intelligent transport services, it's interesting that you combine ICT, which is kind of, kind of new and maybe small, and then transportation, which is uh, old and big and slow. So in there, there are really potential for small companies, new companies, to get to big market. But that, I assume, would require, require partnerships, yeah. and public-private partnerships. And that's an uh, uh, opportunity, but also a pitfall that you rely too much on public-private partnership and you can't get your idea out of that. Scalability yeah, yeah. out of that. I think my, my biggest advice always in this is that, okay, if you're only handling information, you won't make the big money. What you have to do is use the information to really move the people. That's where the money lies. Information is here in transport. It's this much. But actually using that information to really get people from one place to another, that's a huge thing. Yeah, exactly. There are apps which combine information of different travel modes, but by mobile operators, we really mean something else. The operator is active, and it is like a partner to the user, so that actually takes care of the mobility needs <laughs> of the users by always uh, offering the, the optimal service for that case. So it's not only information, but really being proactive suggesting their services. Let's do a bit of a poll here. Uh, these sometimes come pretty fast, and, um, and people think, yeah, maybe in the next 10 years. But, but to, to put it into this day, how many of you would buy if I would offer you, let's say, 100 euros uh, per month and unlimited taxi? Which one of you would buy it? Yeah, that tends to be <laughs> pretty good offering, at least in urban areas. And it's not really that far away. We've calculated it. It would work with if you if you build on masses. And I think that's the that's one of the hugest things. Then, at least Sonia, you've uh, you've studied a lot about what this does to the city and the city environment. In all together, if if we go from the usage that is less than four into a system where you get a good service level, you have a good life without having to own your own car. What do you think that will happen to the cities of now? When, when there, if it's now 4%, if it goes up to 30%, the, the need for parking space, for example, is a lot less. What are you yeah. th your thoughts about this? How will the cities in, look like in the next 10 years? Yeah, the, the concept really has great potential in, for example, reducing parking space and capacity from rows. So of course, that would, me would mean uh, more space for something else and parking space are of course really expensive for the city they are <laughs> worth more than the fee that we are paying for them so this would make cities more attractive and leave space for something more interesting than parking spaces yeah i think sonia and we all can paint picture of the future urban uh, system which is much better than what we have nowadays but we don't make that revolution by just polishing our current services, current uh, transport services, current uh, ICT services. We need whole new innovations, and we need to make those big way. 
mm -hmm. and that requires courage from public entities, from private entities, that requires money. Uh, you can't make it small way, you have to make it big way. That's right. cooperation needed. Yeah. That's very yeah. true. Yeah, one more remark. I think that the thing that we are creating here also is a way smaller CO2 fingerprint. And, and uh, that's uh, a great benefit that uh, comes with our, our solution. Uh, it's maybe more important in other countries, but it's getting more important here too. That's something we intend to measure in future as well. And, and so that how that development is going to go. So, to conclusion, we strongly believe this is this is pretty much how it how it will be. We know that there's a huge change in transport and there's huge business to be gained there. Uh, as said, we are going for an open ecosystem where we want everyone that has innovations to come and join this because we all know that this is not something that one company can do alone, one person can do alone. There's a huge change and it needs a lot of, lot of working together. So any one of you that feel now a niche, so join us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.